Whether they're getting ready for a Super Bowl run or just playing out the string, beware the wounded and hungry Carolina Panther in December and January. Cam Newton threw for 300 yards and two touchdown passes, and the Panthers' defense forced three turnovers as Carolina dealt Washington a crippling blow to their playoff hopes with a 26-15 victory on Monday Night Football here at FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. The Carolina Panthers in the past five seasons are combined 21-6 and in the months of December and January. The Panthers improved to 6-8 and on the the season, not the season they envisioned after last year where they went all the way to Super Bowl 50, but tonight's performance definitely resembled the team that started 14-0 last season and made their way to the Super Bowl. Cam Newton, a couple of touchdown passes, one in the first half to Ted Ginn, one in the second half to Mike Tolbert. The Run game for the Carolina Panthers got going. Jonathan Stewart, 25 carries for 132 yards in this contest as the Panthers held on to the ball for more than 35 minutes in the contest. But when Carolina did not have the ball, their defense smothered one of the top offenses in the National Football League. Washington had 335 yards of total offense here tonight. They came into the game averaging 412 yards of total offense, third in the National Football League. And after the game, I got a chance to talk with one of the leaders of the Carolina Panthers defense, linebacker Thomas Davis. And I asked him to begin our conversation. What is the most important part in keeping your focus when you're not playing to make it into the playoffs and you are just playing out the string, so to speak? You go out, you compete, and you play to win. You know, it's, it's not about coming in and, you know, try to do somebody else a favor. It's going, about going out and competing hard and, you know, trying to win a football game with your brothers. And you competed against a very talented uh, Washington offense. You were able to hold them below their season average. Uh, what was the most important part, important part in being able to hold down this Washington offense for pretty much the entire game? You know, the first thing we had to do, we had to limit their production in the, in the run game. We had to make sure that we eliminated that and, and kind of forced the hand, forced them into throwing the football. And um, that's what we was able to do. We did a really good job tonight versus the run. And, and kind of force them into passing situations. And once you do that, that allows your D-line to really get after the quarterback. Speaking of the D-line, Wes Horton made that play on the first play uh, of the second half. Did you feel the momentum change with uh, his no play? Question, no question. That was a tone setter. Um, it was a game changer, and, you know, Wes made a great play. We was trying to get him in the end zone, though. We got to do a better job on that. <laughs> oh, you want to push him in there a little bit? We tried to. We tried to push him in there. I think he actually was in if we could have reviewed that play. Uh, Luke Keekley's like, right on the sidelines, uh, hip to hip with uh, Ron Rivera. Um, even though he's not on the field, how does uh, his energy, how does that, how is it infectious and in being able yeah, to spread onto your, big, on the field? It's big time. You know, for us, it's a defense, you know, um, he's one of the best defensive players in this league, and, you know, we feed off his energy. Um, he knows the game inside and out. He's still studying and, and watching film, so he knows what to expect in certain formations. So he's helping us out as much as he possibly can from the sideline, and, you know, we're just going to continue to feed off him until he comes back. Oh, you can hear him on the sidelines? Oh, yeah. He, he talks to us, so we, we can hear him. We know. He knows what's going on, and, you know, we're just feeding off of it. Atlanta at home, Tampa Bay on the road. Um, how important is it not just to finish strong, but to be able to have a non-losing season as well? Um, it's very important. You know, that's something that, that we, we take pride in as, as a team, and, you know, we're going to work our butts off. We're going to fight hard, and we're going to try to finish the season strong. Uh, last time I interviewed you at Giant Stadium, you were 13 and 0, I believe. You got the suit on, and now a little bit more of a casual look here. Yeah, it's late. It's late, um, and coaches allowing us to, to travel back home um, comfortably, given the time frame. So um, we're excited about that, and just got to go back and enjoy this live, this win, which is going to be short lived. Yeah. Would you prefer the suit or the uh, casual well, look? Definitely prefer this casual look <laughs> at one o'clock at night. So. Oh, absolutely, Thomas. Thank you so very much. Congratulations. Thank you. For Washington, quarterback Kirk Cousins came into this ball game throwing at least one touchdown pass in 28 of his last 29 home games, but he did not throw a touchdown pass tonight. Cousins, 32 of 47, 315 yards, no touchdowns, did throw an interception in the ball game. Washington no longer controls their fate in terms of making it into the 
NFC playoffs. They drop to 7-6-1 and one on the season. Both Green Bay and Tampa Bay now hold on to that number six spot at 8-6. and six. Green Bay holds the tiebreaker over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. For Washington to make the playoffs, they have to do this. First, win their last two games on the road at Soldier Field against Chicago next week and then at home against the New York Giants on New Year's Day in the season finale. If they do that, then they need both the Packers and Buccaneers to lose at least one more game or the Detroit Lions to lose their final two games. And that's possible because Detroit is going on the road to take on the Dallas Cowboys next week. Then they come home to Detroit and take on the Green Bay Packers in a game that more than likely will decide the NFC North. So once again, Washington drops to 7-6-1 and one on the season. They lose by a score of 26-15. to 15. Stay tuned to a lot of sports talk and a lot of sports talk.com. We will have the latest installment of the a lot of sports talk podcasts. We'll also have coverage of the National Hockey League and college basketball for you. We'll also have coverage of all of the bowls in this festive season, bowl mania in college football. So once again, our final score, Carolina 26 and Washington 15. From FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland, this is Adesina Koike for a lot of sports talk.com.